Welcome to the class. In the last class, we were doing manage floating and it just came to an end, so abrupt end. So I'm just doing a little more, a continuation in that uh, manage float continued. And also in this, okay, so we were doing manage floating and then let me just uh, introduce that out of the types of foreign exchange rates, we've done fixed exchange rate. That is when the government decides the conversion rates, it's called fixed exchange rate. Such a rate does not vary with changes in demand and supply of foreign currency. So only the government has the power to change it. If the market forces determine the conversion rate, it is called floating exchange rate or market exchange rate or simply flexible exchange rate. So uh, this rate varies with changes in demand and supply of foreign currencies. So this is well this is a well organized foreign exchange market in a country having foreign exchange so there is a well organized exchange market foreign exchange market uh, where a country has floating exchange rate and recently another system of exchange rate has emerged and it is called the managed float so managed floating so we were talking it's a hybrid system of fixed and flexible exchange rate that's what we talked about so the central bank does have some power to manage the exchange rate slightly according to the needs of the economy. However, they have to take permission from IMF. And of course, and this is a system that allows adjustment and exchange rate according to the set of rules and regulations which are officially declared in the foreign exchange market. So sometimes this is also referred to as dirty floating. Why? When managed floating in the absence of rules and guidelines, this results in excessive intervention. So a particular country could manipulate its managed floating to harm her, her trading partners. And that is when it is known as dirty floating. So, and of course, there is a term also in use that is clean floating, which is market determined exchange rate without any central bank intervention. So having said that, we are going to talk about factors that affect the exchange rate. So I'm going to, you're going to learn it as P I E S BR. So, so just take a look at this. B P. So say prices, price change. So the exchange rate between countries changes due to changes in demand and supply in the foreign exchange market. So there are certain factors which can cause changes in demand and supply and they are as follows. So let's learn it as P I E S, the acronym and the and BR, B R, that is bank rate. So P stands for prices, that is change in prices. Then I stands for imports, change in imports and exports. Oh, sorry, change in uh, investment. Okay, I've written investment. So PI that is investment foreign investment then E is let's take exports and import changes and then you have what is known as S speculation and then BR is bank rate okay so it ha it so happens that it changes bank exchange rate changes in the relative price levels that cause changes in the exchange rate so it is the changes in the relative price levels that cause changes in the exchange rate. Now suppose the price level in India rises relative to the US price level. This will lead to the rise in the prices of Indian goods in rupee terms. This will reduce Indian exports to USA. So the supply of dollars in India will fall. Now on the other hand, US goods become cheaper for India and hence their imports to India increase. So the demand for dollars will increase. The situation of falling supply and rising demand for foreign exchange would establish the exchange rate at a higher level. So that's how change in price affects exchange rate. Now let's take investment, foreign investment. So there are two forms of foreign investment. One is FDI, foreign direct investment, and the other is portfolio investment. So foreign direct investment refers to purchase of an asset abroad and acquiring control on it. For example, setting up a, of a plant by an MNC in India. Foreign direct investment raises the supply of foreign exchange, leading to downward effect on the price of foreign exchange. 
Now, foreign investment may also come in the form of portfolio investment. That means purchasing of shares, bonds of a domestic company by a foreign company. So it has, it also has the same effect on the price of foreign exchange. So have, so we've done P I E. Let's take a, exports and import changes. So the demand and supply of foreign exchange is also influenced by changes in exports and imports. So if export of a country, if the exports of the country are more than imports, the demand for its currency increases so that the rise of exchange moves in its favor. On the other hand, if imports are more than exports, the demand for foreign currency increases and the rate of exchange will move towards, move against the country. So, so this is how changes in exports and imports affect exchange rate. Then you have what is known as S, speculation. Speculation and foreign exchange market also influences the exchange rate. If the speculators expect a fall in the value of foreign currency, they will sell that currency. As a result, rate of exchange will become um, against foreign currency and in favor of domestic currency. I'm not talking about bank rate. The bank rate also influences the exchange rate. If bank rate is raised, more funds will flow into the country from abroad to earn high interest rate. As a result, supply of foreign currency increases and the rate of exchange moves towards the foreign currency. And opposite will be the case if the bank rate falls. So these are, I don't think this is so important from the point of view of an examination, but it's good if you know about it.